Hello everybody, my name is Boulevard and welcome to Tournament Tactician for the Between Worlds Top 32 of the Seasonal Edition. Uh, this one's going to be pretty short and I'm just going to I'm just going to jump right into it. I'm just going to jump right into it. Let's get in there. So this middle column is really what you want to be looking at. These are the Top 32 decks from the Americas portion of the Between Worlds Seasonal. Um, as you can see, there were uh, an insane amount of one ofs which makes any form of analysis pretty impossible in terms of like telling you uh, hey, this is where this is going to come in. And it makes level two a lot less appealing. I think level two is going to be like as appealing as it was in the Swiss rounds, which is to say not very. Um, but I'll get into that a little bit later. Things that I want to highlight. Number one, you might be saying, oh, well, like, why is Lulu Poppy separate from Elusive Rally? Well, in this specific instance, this Lulu Poppy deck was a Yordle Smith deck. So the only Elusive that they actually ran was Bandle Commando, which is very different from like the Poppy Z decks that we're seeing. And then the Lulu Poppy J4 was a little bit more top end. It ran things like Radiant Guardian and Scattered Pod. It was very separate from this. So uh, everything that is in the one of section definitely deserves to be in the one of section. It's very different from the other things that we saw. Uh, even this Sivir Akshan uh, is Sivir Akshan Howling Abyss, which is very far removed from the Demacia Sivir Akshan that we tend to see. So talking about the predictions that I made, um, I made a couple of predictions over the course of Twitter, the Giant Slayer articles, the last tournament tactician. The main ones being, number one, the top three decks were going to be Elusive Rally, Plunder, and Lee Sin. Boom, right on the money. And then I said number four, very solidly, was going to be Sivir Akshan, also coming in at number four. Now, is it tied with Lee Sin? Yes. Am I going to take that W anyway? Absolutely. The one that I got the most pushback on was definitely my call out on Scion, saying that it was going to fall off the wagon a little bit. Now, I think players might have overestimated and maybe i might have even oversold exactly what i meant by that but in the tournament tactician video i said that scion was probably like the sixth best deck in the game and players were having a hard time finding a reason to run it any over any of the other top five as you can see here scion came on at number six in the giant slayer article i had mentioned that a fall off for scion looked like only five or six players showing up to the top 32 with it and here we had seven is it a little bit higher than i thought it would be yes am i still taking this one yes mostly because i got so much pushback on it and also because I was pretty close, right? Like, I I, did, I wasn't expecting two Scion in the top 32. I was expecting, like, five. It was a little bit higher than I anticipated. And we'll see how that plays out in the top 32. But ultimately, it's not, like, 100% correct. I'd say, like, I'm 80% correct. But that, who's really even keeping track of that? And then the, the sort of gimme one that I called out was that nothing would take more than half of the top cut. Um, part of that happened because of how many one ofs there are, which also makes it really difficult for me to give you any sort of meaningful analysis in terms of what players are going to be swapping off to going from the round, of, like the Swiss rounds into the top 32, but I'm going to do my best. Uh, so ignoring all the one ofs, we're actually only left with like 12 decks. And all I can really do is tell you whether I think these are going to go up or down, because I can't tell you who's swapping off of what one ofs and if new one ofs are getting put in. Uh, but Elusive Rally, I expect to either stay the same or go up. I think that's the... Nope. Okay, that's now we're adding functions. That's not what I want to do. All right, now that I've accidentally written six functions trying to visualize this. So Elusive Rally, I think this one is either going to um, stay the same or more people are going to swap onto it. I could see Elusive Rally actually breaking 16 in the top cut. Plunder, I think, is going to stay relatively the same. I don't see a lot of people swapping onto or off of this one. Lee Sin, I would expect to go up. Um, I, I, you always tend to see Lee Sin go up in top cut. Sivir Auction, I actually think, should go down. I think players should swap off of this one a little bit, and one of the decks that I want to see them swapping off of it for is Thralls. I think Thralls should go up. 8 was a pretty nice representation for it going into the top 32, but I think players have been very impressed by what it was able to do during the Swiss rounds. Uh, and the EMEA version actually... The, the EMEA, or EU as it used to be, now EMEA for Europe, Middle East, and Africa, uh, their top 6 at least looked pretty much the same as ours. Uh, I think Elusive Rally and Plunder might have been tied, and then Lee Sin came in at number three, and then Sivir Akshan came in, and then I think Thralls and Scion were tied on their end, and then there was a pretty big fall-off into... Or actually, no, there wasn't that big of a fall-off. Then they had, like, Lux Poppy Shell Folk come in at, at, like, number seven pretty solidly, whereas we got Bandle Tree, Darkness, and Ziggs Poppy. That's, you know... That is what it is. Um, but so all we can really do in terms of predictions is like look at the top end of things and say, where is that going to go? Um, if players are having a similar read to me and like Sivir Auction goes down, then like technically Scion should either stay the same or go down. Uh, sort of like Plunder. But again, with, with so many one ofs, like level twoing just becomes so unappealing. And it's so hard to tell how many of these people are going to swap over to level zero. Uh, and again, level zero being meta, level one being anti meta, level two being anti level one. So anti anti meta. For example, like if you need an example of this, then like level zero is plunder, level one is ruination decks, level two is like bandle tree and star spring decks, like landmark wind conditions that control has a hard time interacting with. 
it really doesn't mean much uh, in terms of trying to predict what comes out, and I, I tend to suck at predicting how players are going to swap over into the top 32. The main thing that I do want to say is that I think Thralls should go up, and I think Sivaroxon should go down. And I don't really have, like, a spiky lineup or deck that I'm really big on like I have in other seasonals. Like, last seasonal, I was really big on players putting Zoe... Uh, in either, like, your Lee Sin or your Nami deck, and basically just, like, running an overlap of Lee Sin and Nami, be that Zed Lee Sin and Zoe Nami, or Tom Kench Nami and Zoe Lee Sin. That was something I was very big on. Uh, I, not as many players really picked up on that as I thought they would, and I, I don't really have anything like that this time around, is, is more what I'm trying to get at. Um, Ziggs Poppy will probably stay the same or go down. Like, it's so hard to predict on these things. Uh, out of, like, the lower bracket, in terms of, like, I say a lower bracket, I mean, like, things that are uh not the top six but also not one of i think timo swain should go up i was really impressed by this deck's matchup charts and even just its sort of play in general throughout the swiss portion i would like to see more players swap onto this one especially if elusive rally is something that's going to be popping up a little bit more timo swain is the biggest counter to elusive rally but i know that a lot of the top players aren't big on this that said there's not as many top players in top 32 i don't recognize a lot of these names and then, uh, for someone that's been around as long as I have, I should be recognizing most of them. Like, there are a few on here that you might not have seen in a seasonal top cut before, like Zult, uh, he's the Lurk God, Samantha Honey, I think was the first person that I saw run Burn Scion with, like, Decimates and Noxian fervors. Uh, but there's, like I said, there's a lot of people here that I don't recognize, making it even harder to predict things. Uh, and I think, again, Darkness should go up. This one I'm not as confident on, though. Uh, we're actually gonna keep this one yellow, just because of, like how the top end is going to play out. I think either Darkness or Timo Swain should go up, depending on players' reads of the meta, and I think Timo Swain is the one that I would expect to see go up. So, yeah, did Darkness show up as about as much as I expected it to in the Swiss rounds? I'd say a little bit less. I thought there'd be about five Darkness. I thought it might actually, like, be close to getting on par with Scion, and instead, like, Darkness just went for the low end of the average and Scion went for the high end of the average. So I look dumb because they're more spread apart than I thought they would be. But... Yeah, I, I like Bandle Tree is probably going to stay the same or go down. I, I think that like level two lineups just aren't there right now. Um, maybe Bandle Tree that's like, no, no, there's no there's no way for Bandle Tree, right? Because I expect Timo Swain to go up and those have the overlapping regional combinations. So like if I had to make some call outs, it'd be like Timo Swain should go up, Thrall should go up, and then Sivir Oxon should go down. Everything else is like, you know, not super like uh, not confident per se, but not like very gung ho about like plunder moving or lease and shifting or scion shifting uh again like the just the sheer amount of one ofs makes it really hard to give any kind of like proper analysis on how i think things are going to shake out going into the top 32 so this is like as in-depth as i can get for you unfortunately which kind of sucks but is what it is um and that's really the entire video right is like these are, these are like the micro predictions that I can kind of make and, and uh just kind of based on my experience this is what i think can go up or down but that's i mean that's really all i have that's really all I've got. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's the end of the video. I, I really, there, there's just so many one-ofs, like an unprecedented number of one-ofs, and it makes it so difficult to, to know, like, who's going to swap off and who isn't. And like I said, I don't have any spike lineup or deck that I think people slept on that should be higher. Thralls, I think, should be higher, and Bandle City Swain, I think, should be higher. And outside of that, I don't have any strong opinions uh, about the rest of the meta. So that is going to do it for me. Um, thank you so much for watching. As always, my name is Boulevard. Good luck to everybody in the Top 32, or if you're like me and you're just hanging out and watching this weekend, going to be an excellent show. I am very excited for uh, our last seasonal of 2021. There are a lot of cool things in the works for 2022, both personally and professionally for me, so looking forward to that. And uh, until next time, everybody, good luck in your tournaments. Now, I will be back for a set review of uh, Magical Misadventures, as well as next week, not this upcoming week, but like next week, like the week after Magical Misadventures drops, that's when I'm going to be looking to ramp up my YouTube content in terms of like at least three videos a week. I might even look towards streaming again. I'm finally moving soon-ish probably. More things have been figured out in the background. I still don't have a place. We might be a couple months off of that, but uh, things, are, things are looking up. 2022 is looking great for Boulevard, and I hope that you will join me on that adventure. And um, yeah, yeah, I... I I'm very proud of the the uh, predictions that I made for the Swiss rounds and how they played out. I got uh, pretty much everything right. No, It's a thankless job, right? I have to thank myself and you have to hear about it. And for that, I apologize. But um, yeah, hopefully this gives you a little bit more trust in me going into the Magical Misadventure seasonal so that if I say something that sounds outlandish again, uh, you have a little bit more of a baseline to trust me. That's really all I'm trying to do is build repertoire with you guys so that you have an analyst that you can trust that doesn't just throw a bunch of stats at you and has some if you know sometimes some outlandish predictions sometimes they play out sometimes they don't this time they did uh and shout out to boulevard for that but until next time thank you so much for watching good luck in your tournaments